effective data governance is the underlying foundation for efficient analytics. And I can't emphasize more on this one. Welcome to the Microsoft Cloud Executive Enablement Series, where we speak with Microsoft Cloud senior leaders and experts about the latest trends in technologies we're seeing in the market. The goal of this series is to share with you and your teams our perspective on the business value driven by the Microsoft Cloud for our mutual customers and the opportunities for our partners to grow their business with Microsoft. My name is Tom O'Reilly. I'll be hosting the series today, and I'm part of the global partner team looking after data platforms and artificial intelligence. And today, it's my pleasure to be joined by Jiva. Jiva is one of our experts in data and AI and leads the worldwide strategy and execution team for intelligent platforms and AI. Jiva, welcome to the episode. Thank you so much for joining us. It's always great to be in front of the partners. Thanks for having me, Tom. So Jiva, to get started, what was it that attracted you to be leader of our Azure Cloud Scale Analytics business? What do you love about it? Every single one of our customers, if you think about it, they have gone through uh, a digital transformation in the last five years' time. And as part of the digital transformation, they have invested a lot of their money in modernizing their app environment. And we know that uh, as part of the app modernization, tremendous amount of technology maturity and also the process standardization has actually happened. But yet, if you think about it, all the analyst firms like Gartner, IDC, they have published a lot of reports in the recent times that all the investments, 70% of the investments that are made by our customers are yet to provide value back to them. And if you try to peel the layer, you can clearly see that app layer is in a completely different level of maturity. And uh, yet, if you look down, the underlying data and the data infrastructure is actually still sitting in 40 years of legacy architecture and legacy technologies. So what really attracted me is this opportunity to lead this organization for Microsoft to help our customers to transform themselves so they can redefine their customer, user, employee, and the product experience that they provide. Fantastic. I mean, I'm talking to customers, partners every day, and you know, we keep hearing these same recurring themes around you know, challenges of data location or siloing of data. You know, how am I confident in the data set? And then I hear about, Microsoft's intelligent data platform. Can you start out for me telling me, what is it? Is it a new product? Is it a new platform? Is it a new stack? Like, how should I think about it when I hear anyone from Microsoft talk about MIDP or the Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform? That's a great segue for me, uh, Tom. Number one, most of our customers are already leveraging the best-in-class products that they can get from Microsoft on Azure platform. So Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform simply brings a seamless integration experience from operational databases to databases to analytic systems to governance and all the way to the BI layer so that the customers don't have to spend time managing their data estate, but focus on actually doing more with data in creating more value for their organization. I mean, like I said, we've had quite a big suite of, of data products and AI products as well. Where does AI fit into MIDP? I'm sure in the last couple of months time, since the chat GPT has come alive, uh, it has actually a lot of, created a lot of buzz in the industry with a lot of our customers and also with our partners, right? And in fact, you have seen Satya actually talking about how chat GPT is going to be integrated with the Azure AI services as well. So the shortly, Azure AI services is going to be part of the Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform. And that, that's going to be the new innovation that the customers can actually expect from Microsoft. Beautiful. I'm going to come back to that AI topic in a few minutes. But in the meantime, you've described operational databases, other databases, like you know some of our real, real-time databases um, and analytics and so on. This is a super powerful set of tools. How are partners using this today to help their clients? So simply, if you think about it, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, Tom, that it is not the question of if, it's not the question of whether our customers are actually transforming their data estate. Like I said, as part of their continuing effort with the digital transformation, they're already modernizing their data estate. And as part of that, 
Number one, we know that in the recent times, customers have started to modernize their entire data environment just with starting with migrations of individual data assets. But right now, what we are seeing today is that after three years, the customers are finding that the one-off migrations of data assets from on-prem to cloud is not going to cut it. And because of the future evolving needs of the organization. In the last 30 years, if you think about it, all that we did was the operational reporting on the structured data that came from applications like ERP, CRM, and SEM, which were actually centrally hosted and maintained in, in a data center environment. And in the recent times, that actually changed to the multi-cloud world. But predominantly, the analytics meant it is just the data warehouse workloads that we did. But we know that every single one of our customers' enterprise IT environment is being disrupted today with the, with the edge environment. So every single one of our customers today is trying to bring in data from the edge. You know, shipping company is trying to bring in not just from the shipping lo ship location, but also at the level of the diesel generator, which is actually the generating power for the ship. And you know, the airlines are collecting a lot of massive amount of data from the airlines themselves, from the aircrafts themselves too. So what we are seeing right here is that the redefinition of the entire IT landscape with all the operational data becoming integral part of enterprise IT analytics. So the future of analytics is not going to be confined to only the structured data and also to the applications, but it is also to the unstructured data to free text coming in from all the IoT sensors, all the clickstream data and the user behavior data and all these different stuff. And more and more, what we see is that more than 50% of the enterprise analytics, this is what we see in about three years time, more than 50% of the analytics is going to be real-time and near real-time analytics. The delineation between real-time analytics, near real-time analytics, and AI ML applications consuming the data from the data platform and also the traditional data warehouse workload, operational reporting workload that we ran, it is going to bring a massive change for our customers. So what is in it for the partners? It's super simple, which is about how do you actually remove all the disparate data ecosystems that were actually helping our customers to do analytics, but also provide all these analytics in a single environment so that they can actually have a seamless experience, less overhead managing all the data assets, and focus on creating value for their organization. So that's a massive opportunity for our partners, Tom. It sounds like we've been innovating in a couple of different vectors. Obviously, one, building more of this, this real-time capability or near real-time analytics capability. But I'm hearing you talk about the interconnectivity or the ability to get data you know, from devices, sensors, different inputs, and the, the connectivity between these tools. So. Can you tell me a little bit how MIDP is being, you know, a, a differentiator or unique by providing the stitching between the tools rather than, you know, just the tool innovation we were talking about a moment ago? Beautiful. That's a great question, Tom. Number one, as I said in the beginning itself, MIDP is all about seamless experience and seamless integration that the customers can actually get from disparate data assets that they have in their data state, right? So from that standpoint, Think about the current customers trying to bring in data from a lot of different data sources through by leveraging extensive ETL ecosystem of tools into uh, to bring the data into a data warehouse or into their AI ML analytic platform and all that. But what we have actually done, and many customers actually leverage it today, Synapse Link, that any IoT data that actually landed in Cosmos DB can actually seamlessly be available in Synapse environment for analytics in near real time. Think about the value proposition without having to leverage any ETL ecosystem. And many of our customers today also leverage Azure Data Explorer, which is actually our near real time analytical platform for running massive amount of analytics on massive amount of IoT data. And the idea is that the customers can actually leverage Azure Data Explorer to ingest all the data, store all the data, and make sense out of all the data in near real time without any latency between moving the data between all these different, different systems. That's a massive value proposition for our customers because we are removing the latency that exists between disparate data ecosystems 
and then removing the need for customers to do an extensive system integration work across all the data ecosystems. So we've spoken a little bit now about some of the innovation of the connectivity part of the tools. Let's switch to the productivity gains by the sounds of it from that. You know, if I'm a partner, I'm developing new solutions, this interconnectivity between, as you're talking about, a you know, real near real time data coming in, me being able to use it, let's say in a retail environment, what, what sort of productivity impact does that have for our partner base that are developing solutions? So one thing, Tom, to level set before even we tried to get to the point of uh, productivity gains. Currently, 98% of Fortune 500 customers are already leveraging the different parts of the Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform. So if you think about just the analytics alone, which is actually the, the primary and integral part of the Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform, the efficiency gain is that we have research reports that we have published that it is actually 4.8x better performing than any other data analytic tool from other cloud providers. And it is proven that it provides cost saving up to 59% compared to any other cloud vendor. That's a massive efficiency gain for our customers. And also, just I want to bring focus to Azure Data Explorer, which because I just talked about it from IoT standpoint, we recently partnered with the Gigaome Research Organization and we published a research report. And as part of that, what we did was we brought in 100 concurrent users and we simulated in an environment of about 100 terabyte of workload. And in that, we actually ran analytics across multiple different platforms, comparing ADX against Snowflake and also with the GCP. And as part of the research report, what we have published is Azure Data Explorer is about 14 times better performing than Snowflake and about 18 times better performing than GCP. Now, with this massive efficiency gains, think about the lesser costs related to the compute and the processing that the customers have to pay. So better efficiency and better with better products from Microsoft means they can actually save a lot of money. And with that, it, the ROI becomes a lot more feasible for customers to embark on exploring new use cases, Tom. So with that performance data, what I'm hearing you say is this isn't just for the very largest Fortune 100, Fortune 500 companies, that the impact of productivity is felt not only in the pre-stitching together of the tools, but also the actual performance and price performance of the system. Is that right? Absolutely. If you especially go to the lower major and also SMC market space, that is where they have the least amount of resources to manage their data estate, right? And if you think about value proposition that I actually said about Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform, it is about helping customers to do more with their data to uncover more value out of their data and less time doing the data, less time doing the management of the data assets. So from that standpoint, this is in direct value proposition for all the lower major and also SMC customers because they are resource constrained, both in terms of manpower and also money. And what they are looking for is a seamless integration that they don't have to do an extensive amount of system integration work by bringing the tools from different ecosystem players. They are looking for seamless experience. They want to look for time to value. And from that standpoint, Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform actually provides better value proposition from bottom up, really, Tom. So let's switch gears and we'll talk about the market. I mean, when when our partners are thinking about saying, okay, we want to be an end-to-end -end data solution provider, et cetera, what, what sort of market sizing, dynamics, growth do we see? So I mentioned about this earlier, that 98% of our customers today already leverage different parts of the Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform, right? And I also mentioned that as part of the digital transformations, all of our customers are undergoing data, trans data estate modernization. So in my opinion, customers are already invested a lot of their money in app environment, and this is a natural extension of their investment in modernizing the data estate. Otherwise, they won't get value out of their entire investment. And we also talked about how the evolving needs of the enterprise today, which is not just confined only to the operational analytics, but it is also to the real-time, near real-time, and also AI ML applications consuming data from the data platforms. 
So if you put all these things together, there are no customers. Every customer is actively thinking about it. So almost, you know, the one of the best part of my role, Tom, is that the opportunity that I get to be in front of all the executives from customers. And one thing that I always constantly hear is that, is that Jiva, we are a data rich, but information poor organization. So basically what they are telling us is that they are having a lot of data, massive amount of data that they have already collected over the last several decades. But at the same time, they haven't really found the best way to get the most value out of the data. Every single one of our customer today, Tom, looking to do either one of these three things or all of these things. One, they want to take this opportunity to modernize their data estate and simplify the data infrastructure, number one. And most importantly, they want to increase the overall operational efficiency in the way that the data is being leveraged and also sold across the organization. And then the third, which is very critical for customers who are in the regulated industry, which is about data governance, because data governance has always been siloed to very specific data infrastructure or to a data analytics system. And we know that today in our environment, customers have a data sprawl, which means that the data estate and also the data sprawl goes across different geographies. And federating all the data governance is a massive challenge for our customers. So it's infrastructure simplification, increasing the operational efficiency in the way that the data is being sold and leveraged across the organization and federated data governance. And if you put all these three things, three priorities for our customers, yeah. our partners can be very, very confident that there is no one customer who is not actively thinking about all these things because we are talking about gaining competitive advantage in a very, very competitive economy today. And every single one of our customers are actually doing this investment today, Tom. Yeah, I mean, look, for all of our partners, they're working with customers that have data that's you know sitting on Azure. It's sitting potentially in another cloud provider, could be sitting on-prem. How does MIDP bring these pieces together to, you know, or, or why would a partner recommend to a customer, hey, you know, you should standardize on MIDP or you should utilize MIDP for the orchestration across Azure, other clouds and your know, hybrid or, or on-prem? Beautiful. And I want to quote a recent uh, survey that was actually published by MIT. And I share this with every one of our customers that Data estate transformation is not just a technology modernization approach. It is, in fact, only 8% of the modernization can be achieved only with the technology. 92% of the whole work um, in modernization belongs to people redefining the people, process, culture, and all these different stuff. So when our customers, when our partners engage with customers, what we tell them is that one, it provides an amazing opportunity for our partners to be their advisory consultant to the leadership of our customers to redefine how they have to think about their data modernization effort. And also in terms of the organizational change management that they have to go through in line with all the MIDP. So all this while, you have heard me talking only about MIDP. And being cognizant of the future needs of the organization, which is focused on improving the operational efficiency, we have also created a hybrid data mesh framework, which is an integral part of the MIDP. And what we are, our partners can actually do is that not only they can actually leverage MIDP to solve the data estate modernization problem for our customers, but as a complementary, they can also leverage our hybrid data mesh architecture framework to bring the efficiency, operational efficiency that our customers are looking for in getting value from their data top. We spoke briefly about governance here, but this is an area I'd like to explore a little bit more with you. You know, governance, when it comes to data, you know, one, what scope are we able to, to help customers and partners do? And, and how is data governance changing um, from, you know, the old way of, just store and keep everything to now having to be a lot more strategic and deliberate about what we're storing, how long we're storing it for, who's owning it, where it sits. Effective data governance is the underlying foundation for efficient analytics. And I can't emphasize more on this one. So we know most of our customers whom we work with today are all global customers and they do have 
data sitting across multiple different geographies. So when it comes to analytics, one of the most amount of time where they actually spend is looking for all the data sources and bringing all these data from multiple different geographies, putting it in one place, and then doing really a lot of time preparing the data and doing the cleansing work and all that. And we all know that most of our customers know this. 70% of the time today is being spent just in the data sourcing and the data cleansing work and not in real time, not in real analytical work. So what we have actually done is with our purview platform, one, customers can actually have a singular view across all the data assets that they have across multiple different geographies. One, that is the number one idea. And number two, if you know the assets that you have, then you can actually bring classification, data classification, data quality, and all these things as part of the platform. In my opinion, if you think about it, that's one big value proposition and a compelling differentiator that Microsoft actually provides to customers that no other cloud provider can actually claim. First of all, Purview is actually a, not just a data governance platform just for the data assets that are in Azure, but also for all the assets, data assets that the customers have in on-prem and also in other cloud providers as well. So if one of our customer is a multi-cloud customer, they may not necessarily have data sitting only in on-prem, on but also in Azure, but also in other cloud providers too. They cannot have a data governance platform for each and every data environment. The reason why I stated Purview as the single most competitive differentiator from Microsoft is that it provides a singular view across all the data assets that sprawls across on-prem, Azure, and also multi-cloud, which no other competitor can actually provide Tom. So Jeeva, earlier we talked a little bit about the AI piece. I want to come back to that a little bit. You know, how are you seeing AI being used to, you know, increase trust, you know, be able to extract maybe some of these insights that were missed uh, with technologies that just weren't available only a few years ago? Automation is actually an integral part of the entire life cycle of data management, right from the time we ingest, how we store, how we manage, and how we process data. It's automation is an integral part of it, and AI plays a major role in this one. So, for example, I'll give you an idea about how MIDP works. Lakehouse architectural pattern is actually an integral part of MIDP. So, what I mean by that is that customers, irrespective of whether they have the data in the cloud data warehouse or in an operational database or even in other cloud data warehouse too, they can simply bring all those data into an ADLS. And then the best important part about it is that the logical layer for cleansing the data and the bringing the data standardization is being done in as part of the open and governed data like house foundation. So uh, spot clusters, which are actually running on top of ADLS, can automatically curate all the data and from create the data quality from bronze, silver, and gold and all that stuff so that the customers, irrespective of whether they are actually running data engineering workload or sophisticated AIML applications, they can actually directly feed it from the goal layer. And we know that if customers are simple data scientists who are running data science experimentations, who want to have uh, wider access to data, but not really the stringent high quality data, they can actually dip directly from the silver, uh, silver layer of the, the data quality. So what we are talking about here is that from the time the data is being ingested all the way to how the data is being consumed, we are trying to bring the standardization, the quality as an integral part of this whole exercise by leveraging automation so that the trust is on the analytics and the insights that they gain from the data is an integral part of the MIDP. This is why we I keep telling the same thing, which is about MIDP is all about helping customers to get more value out of the data in the shortest time possible, rather than having to do management of multiple different disparate data estates to achieve the same thing. Tom. So we all know Microsoft being partner-led business, you know, we build a lot of these horizontal platforms. A lot of our partners are bringing these tools to market in verticals, either as a software vendor or perhaps a system integrator. Where is the some of the innovation joint work gone ahead with MIDP and some of these different partners? Number one, 
that any time when I have actually referenced the MIDP, it has always been in the context of Microsoft data assets that we currently have, right? The one thing that I didn't communicate until now is that Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform is based on open standards, and we have opened it for other third-party ISP ecosystems to come and help our customers to innovate with that. As part of that, what we have done so far is working with ISPs like Informatica, Click, Fivetran, DBT, Prophecy, OneTrust, even MongoDB, Yugabyte DB, and all these different types of ISVs, so that they can actually work with MIDP in providing seamless integration experience to customers. So whether the customers are actually ingesting the data or whether they're doing a data integration work or they're getting the value out of they're doing sophisticated analytics work based on the data, our IOSV ecosystems actually integrated with our MIDP provides a seamless experience so that our customers don't have to work with multiple different ecosystem players and having to own this large system integration work done. Well, I mean, there's a, I mean, I love to see the engagement there of that, of that partner ecosystem. So, you know, it brings me to the topic of a lot of the conversation we've had is centered on a single enterprise's data estate. But, you know, some of the contemporary topics we're talking about being, you know, sustainability, uh, a lot through the pandemic, the challenges that have happened in the supply chain. How does MIDP help secure, govern, whatever you want to call it, the relationship or the data exchange between organizations, whether that be through a supply chain or just, you know, getting emissions data from downstream or upstream suppliers? You know, how does MIDP help in that? One, I referenced just now that Open and Governed Data Lighthouse Foundation is an integral part of MIDP. And what we mean by that is that we believe in enabling our customers with an open data platform. And what it means for customers is the ability to bring in data from all the third-party sources and also from all the third-party suppliers so they can integrate it with their own data. For example, <clears throat> let's assume that you are working with if our partner is actually helping a retail customer or a manufacturing customer and if they want to build customer 360 or supplier 360 or logistic 360 for that matter they cannot build all these 360 profiles just based on only the ERP data that they have in their own environment they have to largely depend on the external data source providers to bring the data so that they can actually enhance the value that they can actually get by combining all these different data sets. So simply, our idea is to enable our customers with an open data platform, and that's our commitment to our customers, with which our customers can actually leverage it and they can actually integrate it with, integrate it with all the third-party ecosystem players. You've covered a, a ton of ground today from, as I said, the very start of, of you know, these operational data stores all the way up to advanced analytics. When you're trying to have a conversation with a C-level at a customer, we're trying to help, you know, help people understand this. What are some of the challenges that, you know, that you've had in trying to be able to communicate this message when you're, you know, out with customers? Every single one of our customers already have the compelling need to transform their data estate and their data environment. And I already mentioned about the common principle, which is about data is the the single most differentiator that they have. And they can actually gain competitive differentiation amongst our, their competitor by having an extensive and quality analytics in their environment. So if you think about that, one of the major challenge for all these partners, all our customers is that they can really get the idea around the value proposition of MIDP. It's as simple as do more with your, do more with your money, which is you don't have to work with 10 different ecosystem players you can get all seamless integration experience in a one single platform with Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform. The most amount of challenges that we have actually seen customers getting into is about the organizational change management that they have to go through, the people changes that they have to go through, which is about upskilling their workforce to work with the newer system of tools and also the newer way of working, leveraging the data and doing analytics and all that stuff. So most of the challenges, so this is an extended amazing opportunity for our partners, is that address that 
doubts that they have in their mind about whether they will be able to undergo such a big transformation because it's no longer about just replacing one technology system with another technology system, but it is about fundamental re-architecture of their entire organization to work with new tools and new processes with a new level of upskilled people. I think that's where majority of the, uh, the hesitation that I have seen from customers, Tom. As we bring this episode to a, to a conclusion here, any final thoughts that you want to share with us in terms of how partners can really lean in today and get educated and, and come up to speed uh, on MIDP? We are entering into a very, very difficult economic environment. And doing more with less is paramount for every single one of our customers. So the customers have a very simple choice here. They can actually continue to work with about 10 to 15 different data ecosystem ecosystem players, and then having to own the responsibility to do an extensive system integration work. And then more importantly, not being able to scale that infrastructure to the rest of the businesses in their organization. And the alternate choice that they have is about leveraging a best-in-class performing assets, which provides best cost, best performance and also cost efficiency all in one single platform with seamless integration to Microsoft Cloud. The value proposition is very, very clear. Do more with less. Let's do spend less time managing your data asset, but more focus more on getting more value out of your analytics. And from that standpoint, I think the value proposition that Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform provides has never been more accurate and relevant to our customers than it is today, Tom. Fantastic. So, Jeeva, you've obviously got a ton of passion for this topic. What do you love most about your job? Final thing before we wrap up. Awesome. Thank you very much. It's the opportunity that I have to meet with all the customers and getting to know about their problems. And it's amazing to see how every single one of our customers are thinking about gaining the competitive advantage and all that. It's just refreshing to see how they are actually thinking about solving some of the problems and gaining competitive advantage amongst their competition and all that. Nothing makes me more happier in helping them to achieve that in the most cost-effective and best-performing manner, uh, Tom. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up here, but thank you so much for spending the time with us, sharing your energy and passion and knowledge on this subject. I know it will make a tremendous difference in the next conversation our partners are going to be having with our customers. Thank you again, Jeeva. It was great to talk to you. Tom, thank you for the opportunity. It was great to be with you today. And that wraps up today's episode. Don't forget that this episode is a part of a series featuring some of our most experienced and innovative global executives, packed full of great insights and examples of how to make the most out of working alongside Microsoft. If you haven't already, make sure to check out our other episodes. No matter your industry or area of focus, the Microsoft Global Partner Enablement Team is here to enable you and your teams to achieve more. If you want to hear a little more of this episode, we have a podcast which has some more of our discussion and some bonus content. If there's an area of cloud innovation you'd like to hear more about, please send us a note at salesenablement-gsi at microsoft.com so that we can create content that meets your enablement needs. Thank you for listening. Thank you for engaging with us. And thank you for being a Microsoft partner. We'll see you on the next episode of the Microsoft Cloud Executive Enablement Series.